It's showtime. Hey, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor last night? This is the only fun Survivor podcast. My name is Jake Shadell. Each week, I ask my best friend, Thomas Powell, if you did indeed watch a certain reality show. Hey, Thomas, how are you doing on this Saturday? Sunday, Mother's Day. Oh, boy. It is Mother's Day. Um, shout out to all the moms out there. Um, I don't, shout out to the Guatemamas. Yeah, Guatemamas. All the Guatemamas out there. Great. Uh, I do think that um, it is a little discriminatory that there's no kids day. So good point, but you know, whatever I'll, uh, I'll, I'll celebrate mother's day, I guess. <laughs> and is there an uncle's day? There's no uncle's day. <laughs> There's no uncle's You're day. You're being discriminated what about that? against. <laughs> Enough with this discrimination against us. Cool uncles. Yeah, This anti uncle agenda has to stop. Anti anti uncle agenda. Anton uncle <laughs> agenda. Bullshit. Yeah. We don't need an anti uncle agenda. We need an aunt and uncle agenda. Exactly. And I'm going to be picketing uh, uh, every single Mother's Day brunch with this inscrutable message, and people are going to stare at me. What about uncles? What about Uncle's aunts? rights. Uncle's rights. <laughs> uncle's rights to do what? Buy as many Hot Wheels as we want. Have a day. <laughs> Have a day. Hot Wheels are 50% off for uncles exclusively. I can day drink, and no one's allowed to be mad at me. Like at one day yeah. a year. In, oh, in addition day? to all the other days that I do it. Yeah. <laughs> being an uncle is being day drunk every day. It's true. And that's the right thing to do. It's, Happy Mother's Day. That's why day they call it uncle holism. <laughs> yeah, they just call it antiholism. <laughs> that's for wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's drinking yeah. like 40 beers if you're an uncle or like two bottles of wine if you're an aunt yeah exactly uh you're a wine mom you're a drunk uncle a drunkle even that's a phrase people have used before um some of our favorite moms have played survivor did you see our tweet about survivor and all of the moms yeah that i didn't like that you called them mommies i thought that was a little unnerving it's mommy's day don't please don't call it that. Wow! First he introduces Uncle's Day, and now he's trying to erase Mommy's Day. If I was Day. like, if I was saying Unky's Day, I would not be happy about that either. Give me my Unky's Day, <laughs> please. Please give me Unky's Day. Yeah, see, it's horrible. <laughs> no, this, this today Day today is, is so 20th. mother. Oh my God, mother, please. Uh, Thomas, speaking of mothers, a lot of them play Survivor. Did you watch Survivor 44 last night? Uh, yes, I did. Speaking, speaking of uh, things that are mother, how about Jeff Probst on Jeff. this episode? He's literally mother. Jeff Probst is mother. <laughs> He's literally mother. <laughs> um, Thomas, you actually did not watch it last night. You indeed watched it in the morning, I think, because you texted me. I was texting you while I was watching it. Mm. Late morning. Cutting it close. Late morning is kind of the night of morning, isn't it? 11.30 a.m. is kind of the 11.30 p.m. of (laughs) a.m. You ever just say shit? Yeah, (laughs) I do. Not as much as you, but oftentimes I will just say something just to say it. You know what I was about to say was I think it would be fun if we got a Jeff Probst fan cam set to that uh, that Megan (laughs) Trainer I Am Your Mother song. Oh, my God. I try to ignore her so much. Well, it's like know? a TikTok thing now, right? Up. And it's always like yes. it's always like white ladies that are like, my husband is a literal infant. This is what I do for him. I married a baby. Yeah, by it's mistake. like feeding my gamer husband. Um, that's cool. Uh, wives are the mothers we take to home to our mothers. I don't know. I'm trying to write a poem that you put on a poster at your mom's house. You know, I, I hope that's not on a right poster at your boss's house. That's <laughs> I would have concerns. Uh, so, you know, I've been uploading the old episodes of this here podcast to YouTube. So I've been able to revisit a lot of our old podcast episode titles. Man, I forgot about tough live, tough laugh, tough love. That's that's genius work. This is the best Survivor podcast of all time. Yeah, best in the biz. Thank you. Uh, That is, of course, a good title. But is it better than this week's episode of Survivor called I'm Not Worthy? 
Mm. Yeah, that's it. Could be better. It could really be better. I I will say I did like that they you know picked a random quote that Carolyn said. That was kind of fun. I wasn't expecting. I thought it was going to be like, "How is being on Survivor like being worthy of anything?" And then somebody goes, "I'm not worthy of your praise, Jeff Probst." And then Jeff Probst, "I'm not like, worthy of being on Survivor because it's so important and it says so much about society." Yeah. Why so serious? Yeah. <laughs> what if Roman Reigns was Joker? What if, <laughs> it's not, what if Jeff Probst was no, Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns was Joker? I gotta tell you, that's not where I thought you were going with that. I thought you were gonna say, "What if the Joker hosted Survivor?" But I like that we we got mm. there in a roundabout way. I do like that idea too, though. Uh, so Krylon is freaking out about being left out of the vote. This is what you texted me about initially, yes? Yes, it was at ten thirty three. Very, very funny to hear Jam Jam be like, "We got to go talk to Carolyn," and going over and being like, <laughs> "Carolyn, we got to talk," and Carolyn being like, "No," and then <laughs> Carolyn being like, "I've never been betrayed, so I've never been so betrayed in my life," and, and Jam Jam being like, "You did the same thing to me," and her <laughs> being like, "That was too long ago. That doesn't count." Yeah, that doesn't count. That was pre-merge. I like that Carolyn basically. at the end of that was basically like, I'm, I just need to cool. I'm too mad to think right now. I need to cool <laughs> off and then we can talk about it. Yeah, um, that was good. I liked Danny was uh, gung ho about finding out who voted for him. That seemed uh, funny, too. I also really appreciated that they all continue to um, meditate together in the morning and do yoga led by Jamie. Isn't that nice? Yes, very. What are you drinking over there? Uh, Just a little water. That's boring. That's what I have, too. Uh, Would you call drinking water on this podcast a high-vibe experience? Uh, Yeah, I think that would be a good way to describe it. Uh, Yeah, you could call this podcast a high-vibe experience. Yeah, I think I'm drinking water, okay? (laughs) Heidi talks about having highs and lows, and Jam Jam says, we have lows, we have Heidi's. And they all laughed, including me. You were sitting next to them laughing. Yeah. They're just off screen. They're just off camera. That's why you can't see Yeah, you're doing the Nathan Fielder laugh. Yeah. Oh, did you see um, the Ron DeSantis laugh? Yes. Yes, I did. If you haven't seen that, folks. a regular guy. This is a regular guy running for regular president. Uh, we then get Heidi's backstory. This is fine, you know. It felt very um, like early season one lost backstory or flashback, where it's just like, here's who this person is. Okay, now back to the main thing, you know. Yes, exactly. And that's why you come to this podcast. That insight from both of us. Yeah, if you um, <laughs> if you want to hear about how things are kind of like things on Lost, this is the podcast to go to. If you want to consider Joker being the host of Survivor and also being Universal Champion. They should get uh, Jared Leto to reprise this role as the Joker and host the show. Yeah, why not? You know, what else is he doing? Tron 3 that nobody else wants to go see because he's in it. That's my favorite thing about Jared Leto. Nobody wanted to do Tron 3 except for him. And now nobody wants to see Tron 3 because he's in it. Except for him. He wants to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jared. You can have fun with that, I guess. That sounds like uh, something Jam the Jam damn Joker would do. It's a very twisted oh way to make a movie. Have you... Let's be serious for a second. Have you heard about this guy? The Joker? He hates when people are serious. But, you know, he's doing some really, really outlandish stuff. And we have to be serious. He thinks it. that crime is funny. And it's not, you know, I'm tough on crime, actually. My name's Paul Vallis, the next mayor of Chicago. Uh, Jam Jam asks Krylin, Krymalin, if she has the Tika idol. And she denies it, which is a crime, lying. Yeah, lying is a crime. Jail. Lying is a crime. Carson assumes that the three stooges are all still together. I don't know, man. It can't like last the, forever. Nothing gold can stay. Feeling, it's like I want to I want to see them stay together, like watching all three of them get to the final three together and being, you know, genuine and like wholesome together the whole time. That That's sweet. High vibe ex- experience for sure. 
But it's, you know... What was it? It's getting close. A national album out there? Because it was High Vibelit. Good one. Uh, Jam Jam tells Danny that Heidi voted for him and he doesn't believe her. (laughs) Him. Yeah, Jam Jam tells Danny. Yes, okay. He doesn't believe him. I think he kind of does initially and then talks himself out of it. And it's like... Yeah, like he didn't want to believe it. Yeah, he very clearly didn't want to believe it. And it's like, come on, man. You gotta... This should be obvious. Uh, At this point in the viewing of the episode live on Paramount Plus on Wednesday nights, 8, 7 Central, um, we did have a commercial for a new... I believe it's a CBS show called Buddy Games. Have did you see this? I have not seen this. Because you play pay for Paramount Plus Plus, where you don't get commercials. Uh, yes, that is correct. Well, I had the commercial on mute, which is Paramount Plus Minus, uh, where we get Paramount Plus with commercials, but we don't listen to them. The show looks like a game show. Like, uh, you know, a Whiplash, a Wipeout, whatever that show is called, or a Survivor, or a The Challenge, The Amazing Race, one of those kinds of shows. But all of the contestants are teams of friends. Interesting. How about that? How about that? Flipping, the, flipping it on its head. That kind of sounds like Amazing Race, to, to be honest. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what it's about, uh, and when I search for it, it's definitely a, a something from 2019. What did I see a preview for? Is this not real? Did you imagine this? Buddy Games Spring Awakening. Hmm. Was it, uh, was it? No, I swear this happened. <laughs> CBS is gaslighting you right now. Now it's telling me Buddy Games is a WWE movie, produced movie from 2019. Oh, my God. I I swear. You're high and CBS is Romeo. And it's gaslighting you. CBS announced today the new series order for Buddy Buddy Games, a reality competition inspired by executive producer Josh Gumel's real life annual tradition with his lifelong friends. Okay. What is his life? Is uh, that what the movie Tag is based off of? Oh, man. Let's talk about Tag real quick. Such a good show. Movie. Whatever. I have you not seen I mean. that film. Oh, it's fantastic. I watched it on a plane once. It was so much fun. That is a huge watch it on a plane kind of movie. <laughs> it really is. It's, uh, it's very fun, though. Um, I didn't even mind that Jeremy Renner, another Joker, was in it. Yeah, it's what it's um, it. well because it's got like doesn't it have like John Hamm and uh, yeah. Hannibal Burris, Hannibal John Hamm, John Hamm Burris, and then who's the other? Was was it like Ed Helms? That Ed Helms would be in that kind of movie. I think yeah, that sounds right. Uh, I watched it several years ago on a plane, so I don't remember everybody, but that sounds. If it's not right, it's very close to right. Um, being able to bring buddy games to CBS is truly a dear dream come true for me, says Josh Dumel. Uh, this will be... This is something my buddies and I have wanted to share with the world for a long time as we knew there's reliability, blah, 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 blah. What are the rules of the game? That's all I need to know. What's the concept? Oh, it's from Boone and Murray Productions. It's also, you know Murray what? Productions. Okay, no, Hannibal Burris is in that. Okay, there was a, he wasn't billed high enough that I thought uh, Jake Johnson is one of the other people that's in mm. that. But guess mm-hmm. who is in it? Mm. Ed Helms is in it. Uh, okay, so it is related to Paramount Plus. Excuse me, it is related to Buddy Games, the movie that I found quickly googling. Uh, the reality show produced by Boone and Murray and CBS Studios will bring together six teams of four best friends from four different backgrounds, giving them the same opportunity. Live together in an adult summer camp, compete in challenges, and see how strong their bonds really are. I'm so into this. According to the press release, Ryder Dies, that's the challenge, gets the chance to play buddy games where they will relive their glory days and compete in an assortment of absurd physical and mental challenges in the outdoors while bunking together in the same lake house. Me and my Ryder Dies are just out here completing challenges. (laughs) 
friendships will be rekindled and rivalries reignited when they <laughs> when these friends are challenged to prove which bonds are strong enough to withstand the competition. Um, and there's a cash prize, but they don't say what the cash prize is. So you want to watch it? <laughs> no. No, I don't. It does not sound good. It's based on a movie that Josh Duhamel, based on his real life experience. I don't know that I want to watch anything that is based off of Josh Duhamel's real life experience. Speak for yourself. Uh, I would quantum leap into Josh Duhamel, no problem. Krylin finds a lobster shell and Jam Jam gives her a lobster finger. And then Krylin goes swimming in the ocean. Pretty fun scene for the lobster queen. Yep. Krylin. Yeah, I, uh, she seemed, she seemed very happy about swimming. It would be nice to go swimming. Also, um, all the stuff that she had was crab stuff and not lobster stuff, I think. No, she's a lobster. Yeah, don't, don't anyone tell her that, though. Yeah, whatever. I don't give a shit. We're not two wildlife shots yet. This is wildlife shits and that I don't give any. I don't know. Don't listen to me. Uh, Krylin targets Lauren, Danny targets Jam Jam, which I think makes a lot of sense, you know? She'd probably be targeting the uh, Tika 3. Yeah, they've got a lot of power right now. You should probably split them up. Damn, if only somebody had pointed that out two rounds ago. Oh, well. I think Carson would be smart to go after, because, like, like, Jam Jam is really good, and he's astute, and he's pretty good for strategy stuff, but, like, Carson is the stabilizing influence in that team. Mm, if you get rid of that's him, a really good, point. good chance they fall apart. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I feel like it's not going to be, though, because Jam Jam is such a bigger character within that group. He's going to be... I mean, maybe that's why Carson is, like, so attached to him. Yeah, I think it's Carson is playing this well strategically, but like you just need to be perceptive enough to realize what's going on there. Yeah. Danny, Heidi, and Jamie talk about how the Tika 3 are gaining power. <clears throat> now, Thomas, real quick uh, quiz for you. Um, can you give me one number that is higher than the number three? Just one number. Um, Any one number. Two. No. Uh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> the number I was looking for was four, which is how many people aren't the Tika three. <laughs> like, I don't understand how they messed this up so bad. They just, yeah, it's like you, all you have to do is just team up to take out the, pre- the like, dominant alliance, and they always think that they're, like, not allowed to do it. It's like, drop the four, drop the other four, bring back the one, because this is season one shit, where they're being, everybody else is being dominated by an alliance that has chosen to stick together most of the time. Like, how, you had, so you had every opportunity to start chipping away at Tika, and you just didn't because they were the silly ones at the, at the beginning of the merge? Like yeah, when, it could be par- partially that, like they just haven't, uh, the, their mental image of them hasn't changed quickly enough, or it could just be them being like, well, we can get them next, we can get them wherever, you know? Like, we can get them any old time, we've got the numbers, and then eventually maybe do you, you don't have the numbers. Exactly, like, you can't do you, it later. You don't know when who's going to win immunity. <laughs> God. And then even if they do win immunity, and somebody else has a hidden immunity... There's still a third person you could go after. No. Jake, that's not how it works. They have to go after someone else. Okay, let's talk about this immunity challenge. It's last gasp. It's the one where they have to uh, withstand the tide that two people won last season. Uh, Would you believe that Carson practiced this in his bathtub? That was hilarious. But it's like, yeah, all right. Well, some things you just can't simulate uh, at home, unfortunately. Yeah. (laughs) Like, do you think he has somebody at the end of the bathtub slowly lowering a platform so the the water gets higher over his face? Yeah, boots? like, there's there's physical limitations to this. You could probably do it in, like, a hot tub, but, yeah. Why a hot tub? There's more space. 
Oh. Because I, I think... in a bathtub, I don't know that you could physically recreate. Like, I, don't, I think it's physically impossible to recreate the water rising above it. But it would be possible in a hot tub? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, as long as you had the cage thing over them. Hmm. I feel like you just have to go to an actual ocean that has a tide to be able to fully do this. Yeah, I mean, you could just keep adding water to the hot tub. Because the water in the hot tub's not going to be hot. It's going to be, or, you know, like in the challenge, it's going to be... You know, ocean water. I don't know. Either way, it's it's kind of silly. It's more feasible, but still silly to do, is what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying, like, someone should... It's like, here's what I would have done. What I would have done was nothing, because you can't prepare for that. Uh, what I really liked about this challenge was when Jeff was yelling at the people still in the competition, he goes, keep digging, and Lauren made fun of him on the bench. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great? That's very funny. Uh, while you were basically also, I wish that Carson had been like, I was water. I got waterboarded to prepare me for this. <laughs> but yeah. like, it's great that you're basically being waterboarded, and Jeff is just like smiling, watching you. He's just like, yeah, hey, he's a masochist. Love, I love this show. These people are struggling yeah, a- for air, and they've been at it for an hour and a half. Jeff would watch you drown, <laughs> and he wouldn't feel anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so back at camp, Danny targets Carson. Danny tells Jam Jam that they split in the votes between Lauren and Jamie, but Carson is the clear target. But unfortunately for them, our mommy Kryolin is onto the plan. How about that? How about how about Kryolin being able to sniff out the plan? Uh, pretty good. I'm just a little annoyed that they keep being able to to hold the power that they've had because like you said everyone else should have gotten wise to it at this point but you know yeah well maybe people aren't especially smart this time around and you know what? that's fine too it's fun i have a lot of fun yeah it definitely has been better of late yeah uh carson tries to pull jamie and lauren to their side and krylin tells carson that she has the idol and then she considers voting for Heidi to negate an idle play from Danny's camp. You know, this was a good episode. There's a lot going on. And yeah, a lot of stuff in play. Advantages. Yeah. Jeff, what you're doing here, it's working, you know? Did you see even there were multiple wildlife shots? <laughs> I, I didn't. I feel like I've kind of tuned them out because I don't expect anything new, but I would love to hear about these wildlife shots. We did, of course, have a spider. We had a big school of fish when somebody went fishing. Um, and much like how animals have evolved, Thomas, throughout the years, so hath the wildlife shots. This week we got the Pacific Reef Heron. We've, of course, talked about the Pacific Reef Heron at length because we are never leaving Fiji. So with this new era of the wildlife shots, drop the wild, keep the life, obviously. I'm going to quiz you, Mr. Trivia. What do you remember about the Pacific Reef Heron? Are you ready? Okay. What kind of animal is the Pacific... What kind of animal is the Pacific Reef Heron? It's a bird. Ding. That's a correct answer. How many colors do they come in, and what are those colors? I say white. Mm-hmm. Gray. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that's it. Wait. Huh? Blue. You should have stuck with your initial answer. It's only dark gray and white. Got yeah. too confident. This is, this is a, cl- it was a classic test-taking blunder on my part. Once you start second-guessing your answers, you're more likely to change something that was correct to something incorrect. True or false, they are about two feet tall. False. How tall do you think they are, then? Three feet tall. It was actually true. They are about two feet tall. Damn it. (laughs) True or false, they have a wingspan of up to five feet. False. It's longer than that. False. They don't quite reach four feet. Oh, okay. Well, I still got it right. (laughs) 
Yeah. Where might you find these birds? Um, probably near the water, I would think. I meant more like um, continentally. What what land masses might you find them on? Uh, islands, probably. Yeah, close enough. It's Asia and Oceania. Uh, the what color are their eggs? Uh, blue. A greenish blue. Wow, you're actually paying attention during wildlife shots. How many eggs per nest? Four. Two to three. What do they eat? Uh, fish, I'm guessing. Yeah, as well as crustaceans, mollusks, and worms. And final question, or second to last question, I guess, technically. What color are their legs, and also what color are their eyes? Hmm... I, I, I'm going to say pink legs. Or wait. Like a flamingo. Orange legs. Hmm? Less like a flamingo. A flamingo that's only eaten Cheetos. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah, it's, this, it's the same thing, like, the, the flamingo's color being from the, uh, the, like, algae or whatever that's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from Cheeto dust that the, the herons have those, those legs because of their diet. Um, also, the, I don't, their eyes are blue. I don't know. I just, that one is I've never thought about what color a bird's eye is ever in my life. Well, their legs and also their eyes are both shades of yellow. OK. I found it interesting, whatever. Uh, where do you think they rank on the IUCN red list? I'm going to say Traditional near final question. I'm going to say near threatened. Um, their placement on the list is near, near threatened. Is it least concern? It is least concern, uh, globally, I guess. Well, that's good. Regionally, that's a relief. They, in some places, regionally, it's, uh, somewhat more endangered, but I think globally it's considered least concern. So. It's better to overshoot on the endangered thing, because then you're relieved when it's lower. The other way around, not, True. not so comforting. Yeah, that's a really good point. So they say at Tribal Council, the beauty of this game is how every day is different. Who said that? I I got to tell you, I'm usually f not paying super close attention at Tribal Council. Every day, is, did Danny say that every day is different? It was our winner, Jamie. Actually, Danny uh, doesn't want to look back, saying "woulda, coulda, shoulda." Jeff Heidi loved that. that yeah, oh, he loves any sort of And he was like, none of our winners anything. thought that. And what he really meant was none of our winners thought that, uh, especially when we created a situation where they would never have to think that by letting them come on a hundred times before they won. Yeah. Heidi says they all got to take risks. Jam Jam is constantly thinking about the jury. Krylin is not sleeping. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, Danny compares Tribal to boxing, Krylin and Lauren getting a tiff uh, over nothing, and, like, Carolyn is it Carolyn is, like, quickly. very irritated the whole time, probably because she's tired, like... Yeah. Uh, Danny quotes Teddy Roosevelt saying, comparison is the thief of joy, which, rewatching it, doesn't, doesn't really make a lot of sense in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jeff, uh, Jeff loves that Krylin is always saying what's on her mind. Um, I don't know. Jeff was mean to Krylin this. Yeah. Well, didn't he say he's like, do you think that maybe it's because like you're not sleeping and then she just kind of, Oh yeah. <laughs> or do you think like maybe you're mad because you're not sleeping? Cause he asked her if she was mad and she said, yeah. He's like, do you think it's cause you're not sleeping? And then she looks, didn't answer it and looked really mad because are you mad at me now? And she goes, Yes. <laughs> And he's like, whoa, what did I do? I was like, yes, this is the Jeff I want. I am on Krylin's side in this because he was very rude with the way he said you good, need to sleep. I, she deserved it. She had earned that at this point. She's just starting shit for no reason with people at Tribal Council. Like, I don't care that you're mad. You don't get to put that on other people. You don't tell women that they should go to sleep, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Dr. Kevorkian <laughs> over here. Jeff told her to calm down, and that's the worst <laughs> thing that you could do. Jeff was like, you'd be so much pretty if you got some sleep. Yeah. 
Uh, then Carson says that he's a little nervous about the vote, and Jeff asks him about his journey, and he says he's such a quirky person. Jeff loved that, obviously. He said, raise Don't your hand say if you've that ever about yourself. Like a quirky Don't say person. that about you. Yeah, this is, it's like, come on. Yeah. I'm so quirky. Have you ever felt like a loser? Uh, okay, so they vote. Krylin spends a long time trying to figure out who everybody else is voting for while in the voting booth. Uh, very funny scene. I love when people take too long in the voting booth. Imagine doing that for like a real election. Like, oh, should I vote for the old man or Somebody the comes over. in chief? Someone comes Ooh, over and you know. yell occupied. <laughs> Someone's in here. I, um, I was at this party last night and somebody was running around looking for one of the cats. And I was like, is she in the bathroom? And then I heard somebody else say, is somebody in the bathroom? And it was me. I was in the bathroom. I was checking out my roller coaster tycoon park. Well, taking a shit. Yeah, classic. Classic shit taking like, thing to do. So you know, you know what I said? I said, yeah. Like LA Night is, yeah. That's what I said. Uh, yeah, someone's in here. Uh, uh yeah, I the bathroom's someone, occupied. Uh, I'm thinking someone's in here. <laughs> I'm thinking someone's taking a shit. Uh, they vote and... Krylin plays her idol for Carson. Now, this is the big debate, Thomas, this week. Did Krylin need to play the idol or not? What's your take? Hot takes with Tom Powell. How did the votes shake out again? Because I was so... For, I kind of uh, forgot about the idol getting played. <laughs> it was two for Carson, two for Heidi, and three for Danny. Obviously, Carson's being negated. Well, like, no, obviously, but I don't think it was, like, a bad safety move. Yeah. It, like, uh, I think it was a good move because it, like, reinitiated their, um, their alliance, you know? Re-tended yeah, it definitely their... strengthened it. Um, yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, that's the phrase. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's important, obviously. What's going on in the game? What's, wh- who's left and what's happening but the biggest thing I think that we need to talk about here is um, when Danny left before he Jeff could stuff his torch, he uh, did a very uh, long, drawn out Robert De Niro impression. What was your um, What was your takeaway from this? Here, okay, so I think that I think that you are blaming Danny for something that Jeff did to him Mm-mm. because I think here's the thing. He went up and he said, I told my friends back home that I was going to De Niro face when you put my torch out. So I'm going to do that. And Jeff was like, go right ahead. So he does a De Niro face. Not a bad De Niro face. Yeah, It's like a one yeah. that like a friend of yours would do probably too often. Where it's like. Yeah. Like, yeah. I get it. You, you drop the corners of your lips and you do the thing with the yeah. eyes. If, if Robert De Niro was getting eliminated on Survivor, I think it might sound a little something <laughs> like this. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's, it, yeah, up. it's it's not a bad, you know, for just like a guy, not not a bad De Niro face. The thing is, he was going to basically do it until Jeff snuffed the torch and Jeff just sat there and stared at him. And so he's like, well, okay. I got to keep doing it. And then eventually Jeff was like, all right. And then snuffed his torch out. Here's 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 my take. He said as he walked up, I told my friends when you stuff my torch, I would do the De Niro face. And he started doing the De Niro face before he got his torch snuffed. So it doesn't make sense. It should have been torch snuff and then the De Niro face. And then we could go, ah, ha, ha, Robert De Niro walking off. Instead, it was just this weird prolonged De Niro face that Jeff, I don't think, appreciated. Jeff, I don't think Jeff likes bits anymore. Jeff is very sick of bits. Jeff, this was Jeff getting Danny back for that time that he farted during the challenge. Because <laughs> Jeff looked mad for like a tenth of a second. You could see he was like, what the fuck? And then he was like, all right, yeah. I'm on a TV show. I got to pretend this is funny. Yeah, I got to be charming. I got to do the Ron DeSantis laugh. Got to be a good can. sport. Um, who would you vote for to win Survivor? Ron DeSantis or Dave Chappelle? <laughs> What a random trip. Probably Dave <laughs> Chappelle. I mean, sure. people rightfully have problems with him, but I think that those problems are worse when it comes to DeSantis and he has more power. So, yeah. and you know what? At least Dave has been funny before. And 
we can push Dave Chappelle to the left once he's survivor winner. Yeah, exactly. It's our job to do that. <laughs> We're going to be right back out there protesting Dave Chappelle once he wins. <laughs> um, so Danny was the last person who with uh, 100% correct votes. You know who's number one now? Who is number one now? With 83% of the correct votes, it's Jam Jam. Makes sense. Right below him, with 80% of the correct votes, it's Carson. Right below him, 60% of the correct votes, it's Cryolan, who is tied with Heidi as well. And then Jamie is at 50%, and Lauren is at 30%. You still feel like she's winning? I think that she can win just on people liking her, and she's won. she won two challenges at this point. She's won at least uh, one. I know she got at least one, yeah. I don't remember. And I think that she can make one. an emotional appeal to the jury. She would have to yeah. do a couple things. Like, Which if she either makes fire or she wins the last immunity, I think she might be able to do it. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility. Um, let's see. Who has won? You know who I don't think has any opportunity to win it? I could be wrong just because maybe people really like her, but Jamie. I do not think Jamie has any shot at winning this. What are, you, what, what are you talking about? Jamie absolutely could win. How so? I, how Explain. So? <laughs> she could make a really good speech as final tribal council about the idol. I guess she could talk about them doing the yoga thing. I think that would the be... Because they had that she during yoga the... yoga every morning. I... How did you feel about the scene with all of them meditating where it's like, we're just like people on the show and this makes it like actually easier for us to I, to be cutthroat while we're playing. I was like, first of all, no, that is not correct. Second of all, why does everyone do this? Why do you all heighten all your emotional connections and then get really mad when you vote each other off? Like, that's what this, that's what you're there for. It's like, are I, you the one when they keep trying to fall in love with people that aren't their match? It's like, why? You, this is not why you're here. They don't care what they say. They don't care what the match we say. Um... I don't remember what your initial question was. Oh, Jamie. How could Jamie win? Was that what you were saying? Well, what is it? Well, first, first I asked you, like, what is Jamie's path to victory? But then I was like, what did you think about the little uh, thing they had with all of the meditating where oh, they the were talking about yeah. it? I think it's good. I like it. I support it. Um, it reminded me of Survivor Marquesas, um, the ultimate vibe season. They weren't doing As... any news. They weren't doing a news show. OK, if they do a fake morning news show, okay. then Thomas... I'll agree. <laughs> Okay, but the news is so depressing these days. Like, do you think they want to do that? <laughs> and even these days, it would probably be a fake podcast. And you want another Survivor podcast? There's already a million, and only one fun one. That's a good point. I don't want any more competition. Yeah. Um, anyway, how's Jamie winning Survivor? What's, what's the case for her right now? Uh, how is Jamie winning Survivor? By getting all the votes. Okay, she good point. Is, she's going to find the next idol that's hidden. She's going she's to, gonna find to find sit. another fake idol. No, she's going to find a real idol this time. And she'll say, this is my redemption. This is my redemption from losing that one from Kane. And then Kane will be like, that's right. And then, uh, and then she'll save, I don't know, Carolyn or somebody. And it'll be like, whoa, we underestimated Jamie the whole time. And then it's like, wow, Jamie's actually really nice, and we all like her so much. And she led us in meditation and yoga every morning. Wow. What a high vibes player. That's going to be, it'll be like the class, it'll be so much a modern Survivor winner where they will, someone will have like a dominant resume and they'll just be like, yeah, that's great and all, but that's actually cheating. Jamie did one thing, <laughs> and that's really hard, so we're going to give it to Jamie. The one thing was being a positive role model on the island when everybody's trying to snake each other. Being a high vibes person is not all also, about. Jamie is totally willing to be cutthroat. She's just bad at playing. She's a bad strategic player. How can you say that? No, she's a sweet angel. <laughs> <laughs> she's never done a cutthroat you? because she's nice, and not because she's. That's bad. how the jury would go. It would be like, what about when like Jamie specifically said that the meditating would allow us to be more cutthroat? And it's like, don't you dare say that about her. <laughs> I I am fully supporting Jamie. Of course, she did survive this 
episode, so I got to point I thought it that. was really rude to Jamie that you won that last tribal immunity and didn't give it to her because of how nice she's been. That would have been a big yeah. survivor moment that I think would have really propelled you uh, to finishing second to Jamie, but instead we're going to have you finish third to Jamie. I feel like everybody who has won immunity so far probably should have given their immunity idol to Jamie just to be safe. You know? It's the only way that you can build your resume. That'd be a great way to try to play this game is to try and Tom Sawyer people with resume stuff. It's just like, yeah, you know, you could go and not go into tribal council and stay safe. But like, that's the easy way out. You could yeah. give it to me and then I would be the goat once we get to the end. But then you would be, like, way stronger because you got rid of it. You got to play Survivor, Thomas. I'm going to send in an application for you. No, I will not be playing Survivor. Um, why? Is it because you're bad at games? Because you guessed Danis the Manis would survive through the merge, and he, in fact, did not. He was voted out this week. I did, in fact, guess that Danis the Manis would. It was looking good for a while there, but I, I knew that. I think when he didn't win immunity, I knew he was going to get voted off. Yeah. That was the one the one Achilles heel to his game so far. It hadn't quite caught up to him yet as he kept almost winning it, but I don't think he ever actually won it. Uh, I think he won the first round. Okay. So he won it Didn't, once and then he finished in second a bunch of times. Or no, Bra sorry, Brandon won the first round. So he just finished in second a bunch of times. Yeah. Uh, there was no reward challenge, unfortunately. You said Danny would win immunity. He, in fact, did not. He did the opposite of that. Out immunity. Uh, I said Jamie would win. I don't know why <laughs> she didn't. D didn't Jamie tap out, like, immediately? <laughs> we don't need to talk about it. Uh, you said Jamie would be voted out. She, in fact, was not. I said Danny would be voted out, and he, in fact, was. So I got two more points. Increased from 33 to 35. You had 27 points last week, and this week you have 27 points. Yep. That's just getting how it's going to be. Getting down to the wire, my friend. They're really making it hard for me to catch up because they're not doing any rewards. <laughs> maybe with the last two episodes, maybe they'll do something. Since it's, you know, they'll have more time to fill because there's fewer people. If they do have a reward, what will it be? I'm going to say pizza. They haven't had pizza yet. Mm. I'm going to say grilled chicken. Okay. Who will win the immunity challenge? Nope, sorry, the reward challenge first. Who will win the reward challenge? Or I'm going to say, the reward I will say Jam I'm Jam is going to be winning reward. I will say Lauren. Uh, who is winning immunity? Um... Just got to go through. I'll say Heidi is going to win immunity. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Um, I will say Carson wins immunity. And who's getting voted out? I think that Carson is going to get voted out. Mm -hmm. I think that people are going to realize they have the numbers. And I think that as, as much as it strengthened their alliance, I think the fact that Carolyn played the idol for Carson and the it shows how much they value him for that tribe. And I think a perceptive player would look at that and go, well, they don't have an idol anymore. Let's go get him. Mm hmm. Um, in a similar, uh, thought process, I'm going to say Krylin is her time to go. Uh, of course, we're still waiting for Panera or Charmin to show up. Whichever of those shows up, we get two points. What if both? That would up? be incredible if they were both at the same time. Like, yeah. And after you eat the those delicious Panera sandwiches, we know you're going to have to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And you'll be doing it in style. <laughs> Charmin style. Uh, oh, Thomas, I got to do a quick challenge chunk. Okay, lay it on me. The final is next week. And we've got a number of people you don't care about. But also, Jordan and Tori are still in it. As well as, from Survivor, Danny. Not Dennis the Manis. Danny from the NFL list. I tried to do De De Dennis the Manis for NFL, but whatever. Danny from the NFL and Survivor 40-something. And Sarah from Survivor as well. Wow. So. Everyone's favorite Survivor player, Sarah. Yeah. Um, also, there's a part 
of the final next week that is going to take place on a train, and TJ is dressed up like a train detector. So, yeah, you could say it's going to be good. Excited to hear how that goes. You're not, you don't want to see TJ Lavin in a conductor, a train Oh, I love the outfit? idea of TJ wearing a conductor's outfit. Oh, well, you should check it out on Paramount Plus Plus then. Yeah, I probably won't, but, I, you know, I look forward to you describing it to me. Okay. Uh, Thomas, do you have a quote quiz? It's so nasty that it's probably somewhat of a travesty having me. Then he told the people you can call me your majesty. I do have a quote quiz. Send it to me, baby. I, oh. I've already sent it to you. Okay, well, maybe... Uh, this one is courtesy of Twitter user at Ariel underscore JR. No idea who that is, but thank you so much for sending it. Mm, mm-hmm. um, you can send those to Tomas uh, on Twitter if you'd like. This is, oh my God, what is this called? This is, oh God. I don't like how the, the link has a different name than the quiz itself. Have you noticed that? Yeah, that is a little annoying. They'll start reading it and be like, ooh, this is exciting. And then it'll be something completely different. Here's what reality show you're perfect for based on your personality by Krista Torres from the BuzzFeed staff. Oh, this is directly from the staff. None of the, no more of this Genstagram Yeah, bullshit. no power users, no Genstagram. Yeah. Remaking quizzes to trick us. Yeah, making quizzes so generic that we, <laughs> we only realize halfway through that we've done it before. It was so embarrassing to listen back to. <laughs> okay, which of the following qualities most describes your personality? Spontaneous, loving, responsible, people pleaser, guarded, intelligent. Man, it is tough tough to choose between guarded, people pleaser, and intelligent. I'm going with <laughs> guarded. I'm going to go with loving. Um, what is your worst quality in relationship? None. I'm actually perfect. Thank you. No lie. I'm pretty possessive. Some could call me needy. I'm a little controlling. I struggle with trust. I get jealous easily. I can't commit. Damn. This is calling us out. Yeah. The, the, none of these. <laughs> Can't they have like a fake one where it's like, I care too much. I, yeah. I worked too hard. <laughs> I'm too good at eating pussy. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, where's that button? No lie, I'm pretty possessive. Mm. Can't I'll say struggle with trust, I don't know. Um, okay. Have you ever cheated on a current or past partner? Oh my god, this is really... <laughs> You've been no. trapped here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, no. Um, which reality star would you say you are most like? I think you're definitely most like Jojo Siwa from Dance Moms. (laughs) Isn't, aren't they also on Dancing with the Stars? Uh, Nikki, Nikki, my goodness, Nicole Snooki Polizzi from Monday Night Raw. Uh, Lisa Vanderpump from Vanderpump Rules, Neely Leaks from Real Housewives of Atlanta, Darcy Silva from 90 Day Fiance, and the guys from Duck Dynasty. Man, I have so little to go on here. Um, Literally, the only one of these shows I've watched front to back is the Jersey Jersey Shore. Shore. I'm going with Snooki. We're going Snooki on this one. It's the only one I have the correct amount of information on. I'm going to go with any of the guys from Duck Dynasty. They seem good and not Oh, at all wow, okay. <laughs> Someone's outed themselves as a bigot. Pick an activity, brunching and boozing, hiking, spending the days at the beach, traveling, watching TV, reading. Damn, all these things sound so good. Yeah, this all sounds pretty good. Not spending a day at the beach because I'll get sunburn. But, yeah, um, fair. Brunching and boozing. Do I, I don't mind hiking, but it's like a very once in a while thing for me. Um... I do like hiking a lot, but I love watching TV, too. I love, I do love watching TV. I think we got to pick watching TV, considering the show that we're doing. <laughs> you pick watching TV. I'm going to pick hiking. This is, of course, a fantasy, so we can be anyone we want. What do you do for work? I don't. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm in retail. I'm in sales. I'm in the creative field. I deal with finance, something else. Something in else. creative field, actually. No collar. Oh, yeah. Would you be no collar, blue collar, or white collar? No collar? I mean, I I don't really consider mine a white collar job, but I think that would be, it's an office job, so it would be more like that. 
I would be no collar uh, friends with Joe Anglum, the goodest guy that's ever been on the show. Um, what's your best talent? I can sing and or dance. Yep, just like Joe Joe Siwa. I have good survival skills, uh, writing, networking. I have too many to name. I don't need talent because I'm beautiful. Uh. I'm going to say, because they don't have trivia on here, I'm going to say I don't need talent because I'm beautiful. Good. I don't need talent because I'm really good at trivia. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I've got my answer, and here it is. You can handle anything. Being deserted on an island with complete strangers is a challenge you're willing to accept, and you'll have a good shot at winning the big bucks. Go for it. What show is that? Is it Survivor? It is Survivor. What is your wow. say? Wow. I actually got one of my favorite reality shows, so it's not Survivor, but I feel pretty good about it. Whether you realize it or not, people admire your sense of fashion. Now is the time to be acknowledged mm. for your unique sense of style. You will soon be setting new trends for the next decade. That is Project Runway, isn't it? Of not? course, Project Runway. Yeah. I, when you, as soon as you said it's one of my favorite shows that's not Survivor, I was like, I bet that's the P.R. And I'm not talking about Bad Bunny's home. I love Project Runway. We did a simulated season with Project Runway people. We did. We did. It's on our YouTube channel, I'm assuming. It is. All of our simulated seasons are on our YouTube channel, as is everything we've done since we watched Heroes vs. Villains in the year of Sandra a few years ago. You remember that? Uh, yes, I do remember that. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I remember the year of Sandra. Yes, Queen. Yeah, I remember. Who could forget the year of Sandra? An unforgettable year. If you're new to the show, uh, The Year of Sandra is, of course, when we watched Pearl Islands, followed by Island of the Idols, followed by Heroes vs. Villains, followed by Winners at War. Four seasons for us with Sandra over the course of a year. You get it? And then we would say Yas Queen a lot. A lot of funny bits. Do you remember a bit we used to do? Uh, where we would uh, we were saying we were getting paid by Mike Bloomberg. Oh yeah, I really I think weren't we auditioning to get paid by Mike Bloomberg? It was like we please give I us ten know. million dollars. I didn't I didn't listen back. It just was in a lot of the s- descriptions of the past episodes. I was like oh that's Mike Bloomberg yeah, was throwing a fun. lot of money around, and we were just trying to get a little bit of that. If you'd like to throw money around our way, you can go to patreon.com slash just podcasts. That's where we have our other podcasts that are for sale for money. And if you want to give us money, that's where you would do it. What's a show you would want to um, produce um, from that one? Uh, Justpodcast.com slash just podcasts. Good question. Patreon.com slash just podcasts. If we get enough people subscribed, maybe we can build our own website. I'm just going to say just, just Cena is one mm. that I would advertise where we talk about John Cena mm-hmm. and his many creative endeavors. Yeah. John Cena on the No Collar Tribe? Can you imagine? He has no uh, collar because you can't see it. Exactly. Thomas, what's your Twitter if people wanted to send you a DM or a tweet that has a Quopes quiz in it? Uh, yes, that is at Tom, not Tom. My DMs are open for quotes quizzes. Thank you once again, Ariel, for that wonderful quiz. I think we were both very happy with how that turned out, even if during the process, uh, <laughs> we were slightly uncomfortable. It all turned out great. Um, and, uh, would like to thank the listeners. Thank you for listening. Can we also say just like be nice to us? Please be. Yeah. Please be nice to us. Like across the board, be nice to us on all platforms. Like we're trying so hard. I have one rule, and it's that everyone needs to be nice to me all the time. Mm-hmm. Is that so hard? Like, let's be serious about it. Let's be serious about it. It's not hard to be nice to me. I'm a nice person. I wait to say shit about people I don't like until I'm in the comfort of my own home, and I know they can't hear it. And that's why I'm not going to talk about it on the podcast, because that would be rude. Be nice to other people. Um, did you thank the listeners for being nice or listening? Uh, I did thank the listeners uh, for being nice and for listening. I would love to thank them again. Uh, I especially would like to thank any listeners that have sent us a Quopes quiz, which is one listener. We have a lot of listeners. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of listeners. They're just shy. They don't like sending Quopes quizzes, except shy, for Ariel. Yeah. And thank you again, Ariel. They're shy, and they like to be mean. So if you want to, um, you know, prove us wrong, 
Do it. Tom, not Tom. T H O M. Go dive into those BuzzFeed. No, go dive into those BuzzFeed quizzes. Yeah, but dive in. Have fun. It's a lot of fun. BuzzFeed quizzes a lot of fun. I took a quiz today on um, what kind of sound bar I should get for my home and the TV. Um, and it was one brand, you know. So maybe I should go. Maybe I should go find another quiz that gives me other brands too, you know. Anyway, uh, you can review the show on iTunes or Spotify, and it's easy. And what is the spoiler plate review, Thomas? Uh, this is my favorite podcast. I like it better than all the other podcasts. I give it a big thumbs up. Spotify does not allow you to leave reviews, but if I could, I would say I look forward to seeing this in my Spotify wrapped. All righty. Well, it is Mommy's Day, so uh, as we always say at this time, have a great mummer. <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. I guess mooses. I can't say deuces because that's that's for Father's Day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mooses. That's for Daddy's Day. Are you going to call Thank it that? You. Are you going to call it Daddy's yeah, Day? I'll, I'll probably call it Daddy's Day. <laughs> and then also Graddy's Day. Around the Graddy's, same time. Yeah, da- Daddy's Day and Graddy's Day. And then uh, every time I don't get something I want, it's uh, something I like to call Braddy's Day. Who's going to be going off to college? Graddy's May. <laughs> <laughs>it looks like you can get a pack of the like soundproof foam stuff for like 15 bucks and it's so like with the price of eggs these days with inflation yeah that's like two dozen eggs things are too expensive i'm telling you and they keep getting more expensive because they have the flu or something like get the fucking flu shot it's not my fault the chicken didn't get a flu shot you know yeah well they can't uh they can't eat chicken soup so at this party, it's especially deadly to them because they can't tra- they can't eat that to feel better. Wait, what can't they eat? Chicken soup. Oh, oh right, because cannibalism. Because it would be cannibalism. Cannibalism would be horrible. Uh, what if though? You know, pretty funny. Do they eat eggs though? I guess a lot of animals eat their eggs though. That's not anything. Do chickens eat eggs? I wasn't aware of that. Um, I guess if they're inside the egg, they eat the stuff in the egg. But that's about it. No, I think they'll eat uh, anything you sprinkle in their feed. Oh, so they're just too stupid to realize that they're cannibals. They're flat heads, yeah. They're very, uh, they're very stupid. Man, animals are so stupid. Not us, though. We're smart guys. Yeah, we're smarts. We're, we're smarts, animals not animals. On planet Earth. They should do a Planet Earth documentary, but about us humans and how we're the best animal. It'll be like, humans are the smartest animal. They invented cheeseburgers. Yeah, humans are the smartest animal. They invented cheese. You know, maybe the cows made the stuff to make cheese, but humans invented cheese. I'm waiting. How do you make cheese, actually? Uh, you... It's a good question. I know that there's, like, an aging process to it. Yeah, Um, age 60 days, age 90 days. I was bragging about that, the cheese heads of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay, you start with fresh warm milk, you acidify the milk, you add a coagulant, test for gel firmness, cut the curd, stir, cook, Let's see what these other steps are. Stir, cook, and wash the curd, drain the curds, salt, and age the cheese. Oh, okay. Sure. Easy. Well, humans did that. Yeah, anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. Not a deer, though. Not an Except owl. not animals, yeah. Not any animals. We use the animals. Owls are so majestic, why aren't they making cheese? Smarten up, probes. <laughs>